guys, welcome back! So, for this video, let's point out my classic arcade puzzlers from the 80s and 90s. But I must first warn you that there's also a couple of action and platforming games included that have that slice of puzzle solving as well. So, let's take a look! As the name suggests, puzzle video games involves a lot of puzzle solving and besides that, Many of them incorporate other stress elements like time pressure, action and platforming while attempting to solve them. So narrowing down to my preferred era of gaming and without any specific order, here's my favorite classic puzzle games. One of the early action games with puzzle elements was Locomotion, an arcade exclusive game developed by Konami back in 1982, in where we must use those sections of a railroad track to construct a path for this train that never stops. Passengers must also be picked up while in motion, but if you fail to do that, a crazy train will be sent onto the tracks that will try to make our lives even more difficult. We must avoid it at all costs. Locomotion ended up inspiring Pipe Mania. So extreme caution when playing these two. They're so addictive that you'll certainly find yourself playing them for many, many hours. Pipe Mania was originally developed by the assembly line for the Amiga and later ported and published by Lucasfilm Games to all other home systems of the time, also changing its name to Pipe Dream, without any plausible reason. So in this game we must have to connect those pipe pieces that randomly pop up on the left side of the screen and assure that the nasty yellow goo passes through a number of pipe pieces, allowing us to advance to the next level. It's that simple. The music kind of reminds me of the 1978 arcade original Space Invaders, cause it speeds up as the liquid flows towards the end of the pipeline, putting a bit of pressure onto the player. Brilliant stuff! What started being just a simple character animation made in deluxe paint by DMA design employee Mike Daly turned into one of the best video games ever made. Published by Cygnosis in Valentine's Day of 1991, this puzzle, strategy and action game sold on its first day and for the Amiga only 55,000 copies. That was something mind-blowing back then. Everyone knows what Lemmings is all about. It crossed practically all generations of computer systems and consoles and is known as the most widely ported video game ever. The two following sequels, Lemmings 2 The Tribes and All New World of Lemmings, are also extremely well made, but the first one, for its originality only, is still my favorite of the franchise. As you know, DMA design is nowadays known as Rockstar North, which means that the minds behind the Lemmings franchise are also responsible for the continuous best-selling titles of the Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Redemption franchises. Kurushi, also known as IQ Intelligent Cube in the United States and Japan, is a brilliant and kind of obscure puzzle game exclusive to the original PlayStation that places us on a long and narrow grid with a wall of cubes tumbling towards us in different patterns. We simply have to run around lighting up squares on the grid and then push a button to eliminate any cubes currently on those squares, sinking them onto the ground. Some of the cubes are lit up and when they're sunk, they will highlight adjacent squares on the grid for us to trigger at exactly the right time. This sounds easy, but if we're not focused enough or somehow distracted with something else, well, you're already guessing, it's game over. So, and to be more specific, if we do as much as blink an eye, we're done and buried. Still, I consider Kurushi one of the best original puzzle games to grace the genre in late 90s.
Plotting is my favorite puzzle video game to play at the arcades and later at home on the ZX Spectrum and Amiga. So many coins spent with plotting, trying to get through all those levels that can sometimes really mess up with our brain. And that's a good thing. It was developed and published by Tejido in 1989 and, as said, ported to a ton of home systems from the good hands of Ocean Software. Besides that, it was also re-released back in 2005 for the PS2, Xbox and the PC as part of the Tejido Legends compilation. Another Tejido legend was also a puzzle game entitled Puznik. It was even considered the 34th best game of all time for the Amiga. It's a tile-matching puzzle arcade game also released in 1989 and it's a turn-based or hot-seat two-player game. Again, this one is highly addictive, so be careful! Ocean Software was once again the company behind the conversion to all home systems of that era. Even in 2003 a late PS1 version was released. Two really fun and addictive little games from those amazing folks at Tejido. Hudson Soft are the ones that started this franchise, so the PC Engine and Turbo Graphics are Bomberman's home. Over 70 Bomberman games have been released since 1983, but for me, and apart from the also amazing Dino Blaster, the DOS, Amiga, and Atari ST European versions of the 1990 Bomberman, this 93 installment is as well extremely addictive, and I simply couldn't stop playing it. The basic concept of blowing up blocks and cute little monsters while searching for extra bombs, power-ups and the door to the next stage is just timeless and everyone can simply pick it up and play. So simple! The franchise is also known for providing some of the best multiplayer fun out there and this particular one was considered best TurboGrafx-16 game of 1993 by Electronic Gaming Monthly magazine. By the end of 1991, System 3 published Fuzzball, this gorgeous looking and highly addictive puzzle platformer that came from Scan Games Norway and almost had also a C64 version. A two-level preview was even bundled in Commodore format, but this port ended up being cancelled in the last minute due to inside conflicts. Fuzzball is also the only title developed by Scan Games Norway that had a commercial release. Despite all that, Fuzzball is for me highly addictive with beautiful graphics, music and extremely challenging gameplay. Even today when I play Fuzzball, I'm completely absorbed by it and it's really hard to let go because I just want to clear one more screen again and again. And there's 50 of these with an obvious increased level of difficulty and decorated with different styles. It can also be really frustrating because if we touch an enemy, we're instantly dead. There's no energy bar, so we must plan our every move really carefully and to complicate things even more. Some screens have ice over the floors. And besides all that, a clock counts down and when the time runs out, flying insects enter the screen with the mission of hunting the player down, just like Arnie in the Terminator. These were the days when games were really challenging and finishing every single screen or level is a complete victory. This is probably my favorite action puzzle game ever, Rock and Roll developed and published by Rainbow Arts in 1989 and with an awesome soundtrack by my all-time favorite composer Chris Ulsbeck. This is a huge game in where we control a ball with a mouse and try to reach the end of each level, avoiding ventilators, magnets, arrows and other objects that simply drains the player's energy. It's not an easy task, but it's a highly enjoyable one. 
the ball physics are spot on and we have a good control over it and can easily anticipate annoying situations. It was one of my early reviews from my channel, so if you want to know more, feel free to click on the annotation in the top right of the screen. This Callisto platform and puzzle game was so damn enjoyable and addictive that when I moved to IBM PCs, I just had to grab also the DOS version. And sorry to say, but the DOS port is the one to have. By that time I started to get really bored by the annoying disk swapping that Amiga users without a hard drive had to stand. Even so, playing the Amiga version with the Maverick 1 is phenomenal. There's also the Amiga CD32 option if you happen to have one of those that offers a couple more audio tracks and faster loading times. We control four colored furry creatures, each with their own special abilities, across eight main locations like the desert, forest, mountain, etc., each with 10 levels plus bonus levels. Besides the amazing gameplay, it also offers awesome music, graphics and even references to other video games and movies. Everyone should try it, if you're in the mood for some relaxing puzzle platforming, obviously. So guys, hope you've enjoyed my favorite puzzlers. As you've witnessed, my choices aren't narrowed to that simple and traditional meaning of the word. Action and platforming combined with puzzle solving within a time limit are ingredients that really attracts me to this genre of gaming. In the meanwhile, click on that bell icon so that you're notified when all my future content becomes available. Also let me know down in the comments section below your own and personal picks. And don't forget to like, to share and to subscribe to It's a Pixel Thing. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode.